it's interesting that some people see that their handling is not up to scratch and they still think well i'll give it a shot and see how i go everyone's been talking how passing rate in perth is below average it's like 35 percent or whatever i don't know where people find that sort of data i guarantee you that every single assessor that i've come across will treat you fairly. I have a lot of students that I teach maybe once a week. The rest of the week, they'd be practicing with their private supervisors, their partners, parents, brothers, sisters. The problem is those supervisors often suggest, don't worry about indicating out of the roundabouts. It doesn't matter if you check your blind spot. When you learn something from an instructor, keep that knowledge and implement it every time you drive. Every person that I taught, if they were disciplined about repeating things correctly when they drive with their private supervisors would cut their learning time and the entire process by half it comes down to correct or incorrect repetition if you repeat things incorrectly it's going to be counter effective some people say blind spots and mirror checking they're minor things they are not because the majority of people who walk away from accidents the most common thing they say would be I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. I see a lot of comments. People believe that the Department of Transport is a machine that makes the money by failing people multiple times. It couldn't be further from the truth. Passing rates for people who can drive relatively well is one almost 100%. But for, for those who are not prepared, is 0%. Your situational awareness must be up to scratch. A couple of weeks ago, I had a person who did a lesson with me about three days before their driving assessment. And that person, against my advice, decided he's going to go for his test with, with their own private car. And I said, well, that's fair enough. Based on what you did today, you certainly would not meet the standard. The person was palming the steering wheel, hardly ever checked the mirror, no blind spots, you know, indicators out of the roundabout so, and I messaged him in a few days after his test to ask how'd you go did you pass and uh, he goes yeah yeah it was all good yeah passed and I said okay congratulations well done but anyways never thought of it ever since and then a couple of weeks after that I took somebody for, for, for a test and as we were standing you know to get called by uh, by an assessor the same person shows up and sits in the room where they call driving test candidates. He was pretending that he didn't see me. So the next minute, the assessor is calling his name to take him for a test. And uh, w worst of all, as, as my candidate was out in the test after maybe 15, 20 minutes, that person came back, which means it was insufficient to meet the standard. You would have to be in your driving test for at least about half an hour don't panic if it's 25 minutes. If it's quiet traffic, you know, it could take a little bit less. But anyways, this bloke came, it was an overseas license holder, by the way. He came back within 15 minutes with the assessor. It is impossible to pass unless you can meet the standard. You don't have to necessarily spend money on lessons, but if you take us seriously, if we tell you, well, you have to do this, you can practice with your private supervisors. If you just keep booking the tests and keep paying the fees to the Department of Transport, yes, of course, they will make money, but it's not their fault. What I do, lesson before the test, we would go through about 35 roundabouts, three or four T-junctions to turn right, reverse parallel parking, reverse parking on the right side, 90 degree right side reverse parking. A lot of instructors don't show that for some strange reason. Reason. If an instructor isn't confident enough to show these things and take people through these situations, how do you expect them to meet the standard?